Hello everybody, I'm Emma Central and welcome back to another OMSI 2 video where you join me back in Great Grundorf. It has been a while since we were last in this map, so it's very, very nice to be back. And we're in Great Grundorf 2, having a little look, that does say A2, but we are looking at A3, the one of the airport link services that runs between here that is the main airport terminal on the map and South Valley Hospital. So I'm going to just set up the bus now, so I actually remember how to set up this vehicle. Uh, as I was talking then, I, I forgot that this one has a weird setup. There we go, I've managed to set it up. This one is weird because obviously unlike the other vehicles, you do click the electrics and the engine on separately. And because I'm that used to driving these street lights where you just use the same button to switch it all on, it is quite difficult getting used to it. So I'll pull the vehicle up to stand, get all the doors open and I will get the destination sorted for A32 South Valley Hospital. So yes, in this video we are driving the NRM, the new Routemaster, that comes with the add-on London pack that is available on Steam for £27.07. and pence. The add-on London pack includes the map itself, as well as four vehicles that are this, the new Routemaster, the Evo City that is basically based off of V5LH Evo City, the E200 that is the C200, and the Enviro 400 Dual Door, that again is a C400 for copyright reasons. So let the destination blind set itself up. For this video we are using a blinds mod that I will link in the description below, as well as this absolutely stunning Lovian City repaint that is obviously fictional but it is still quite nice, that is made by ScottRail605. So again that will be linked in the description below so you can give it a whirl as and when you want. So let's hope somebody jumps on. Um, at the moment it's not looking too good. I'm going to assume that that has to sort itself out as well. There we go, so I'm just going to move forward slightly and hope that someone is going to jump on. Because I assume they're all waiting for this, either that or they're all waiting for the E3 in 15 minutes. Nope, no one seems to... Oh, there we go, they're, they're, they're on the way, they're on the way, they're from the other stand. So yes, I forgot that this map is a conversion. I will try and find the download link for you. This is a free to download map and it is quite an obscure one to find. But for some reason, the download link itself is on a YouTube video. So I will link it in the description, the, in the description below so you can download it and give it a whirl yourselves. But do bear in mind that this map seems to have, although they've converted the basics of it, it's got sort of Hong Kong AI vehicles and the roads are all converted. It does seem that some of the passenger bus stop cubes are not transitioned already as of yet. I'm quite impressed with how much I actually remember about this vehicle because it has been a long time since I've last driven it. So this is a really, really fast vehicle and for some of you who may not have been to London and may have driven this, you will think, oh my goodness, why is it this fast? Now believe it or not, in real life, um, after my recent trip to London, I did discover that these are actually this fast in real life and they are absolute rockets of these things. <clears throat> That's why there's been so many minor accidents and things with them ever since the entered service. See, it is a nice bus though, and it must be said that I don't... Oh. I'm not in... 
not interrupting the announcements. We're not we're not having a, an argument with iBoss again because I lost last time. Oh, train. Very nice. So it is a very, very nice vehicle, and it must be said that um, regardless of sort of if you... Oh my gosh, more announcements. Oh, it's because we're going into the motorway, that's cool. That's cool, they ask him to put seatbelts on, it's brilliant. But regarding these sort of vehicles, I know that there's a few of you who have got in touch, and for those of you who have, thank you very much, it's always good to hear from you all, um, about sort of the worth factor of add-on London, is it worth getting? I know a few of you have said that you won't be able to um, sort of work the map, but is it worth getting the buses, or there may be a few lag issues? And personally, um, my sort of outcome from that is I do recommend, even if, even if you can't get the map working, I do recommend buying the add-on um, for the vehicles, even if it is just the vehicles. What you'll find though is in Lon is in add-on London there may be sections of routes so you could do some part route workings and things like that. And if you turn the AI down, potentially change the AI list as well. For those of you who have lower end PCs, um, you might be able to get it working as well. However, regardless of that, um, the vehicles are pretty much worth it anyway, I must, that must be said. And speaking of vehicles, um, something very, very exciting. I'll be showing it off properly in this week's Talking Buster show on Friday at 4pm. Do not miss it, and you can watch it back on demand um, anytime after its release as well. Oh, come on, game. There we go. So is V3D that has made a return to the OMSI 2 developing world in quite a big, in quite a big, big fashion um, with the um, Leyland Olympian is pretty much either Leyland or Volvo Olympian. Um, to be quite honest with you, um, the bodywork that is used is the Northern Counties bodywork. Again, there were more screenshots and things on Friday, in Friday's show and I'll be showcasing all the full details about it then. However, a few screenshots have already been sort of released and things, and it does look very, very good. Um, safe to say I'm very much looking forward to it. Oh, should we try and get a screenshot next to this? You see, I'm just, I'm not used to this actually being this fast. Oh, are we back? Hang on. What are we doing? Oh. I just move that forwards, there we go, and then, hey, there we go, that's what we want. So that's going to pull off now and go to Grundorf Bay, I believe I have done a drive of the A2. Don't know if I've actually done it in a video format or not, if I haven't I will do one in due course. And it is quite a nice route I'm running between the airport and Grundorf Bay. It's just like in real life. Sort of pulling in front. I mean, this is the thing though with OMSI. And um, for those of you who've ever driven on like a motorway in a situation like this, for some reason when the cars change lanes, they slam all on. Um, I don't know, as I say, for those of you who have driven and may have noticed that, but they do slam all on um, when they are changing lanes. Uh, especially when you're in a motorway setting like this. Um, can be really annoying. I don't know why he's got his right indicator on us, that scan your truck. Because of the lane he's in, I can't overtake him, he's middle lane hugging. But yeah, the Leyland Olympian, that is of over Olympian, whichever Olympian it is, it looks very, very nice. Um, V3D is currently working on a um, Northern Counties Palatine um, bodywork um, that is 
quite a standard type. It does come with sort of Leyland and it's coming with Leyland and Volvo driving units in the past, so hopefully that provides an opportunity for both of them to be available. And most places in the UK at some point did have a Northern Counties Palatine vehicle, be it just the one. I know even West Yorkshire, first West Yorkshire, um, sort of in the late years, um, when they were pretty much just RHs and Royales, ended up with two Northern Counties Palatine vehicles, 34211 and 34214 from South Yorkshire, um, shortly before the withdrawal. It wasn't actually three, it wasn't actually 34214, no, it was 34207. 34207 and 34211, because I believe 14 was actually one of the is it one of the last survivors in South Yorkshire? I've got 14 in my head for some reason. Um, somebody in the comments below who knows where 34214 ended up, let me know. There's for some reason I, I cannot think. Let's go for the overtake. This is an absolutely perfect bus for this motorway work, that must be said. And by the looks of it, the Corner Games UK is also on OMSI 2 as well, so shout out to you if you're watching. So I am personally looking forward to the V3D release of that bus. Payware or not, it is looking very, very nice and hopefully provides a lot of different opportunities um, to sort of repaint and potentially even sound mods as and when, um, obviously, it's released. There we go. So now looking onto the repaint itself and the reason I've chose it, well, firstly, Lovian is has a really, really nice livery. So that's an initial um, choosing. However, something big is happening in Lovian land from tomorrow, where I believe is it, it's something like 50 or 60, potentially even more than that, actually. Um, basically, a lot... Oh, that's it again. Basically, what I know is is that a lot of B5 TL E400 MMCs are entering service from tomorrow. I understand that there's something, is it, I want to say it's about 75 potentially. Um, I really hope I'm right with that. And then an additional 20 odd or so, to basically to make it up to around the 100 mark, um, are going to be entering service in due course next month as well. So I don't know what services are going on, um, I imagine they've got some allocated routes. Um, I understand that obviously they were driving the B90Ls now, all the B7s have gone and have ended up with other operators around the UK. And it's now the turn of the B90Ls, so you assume the Gemini ones are going first, 57 regs, and as these E400 MMCs enter service, they will pretty much just go up the years until probably by the end of summer, um, most if not all of the B90L Gemini 1 and 2s will be off fleet at Lovian bar the city sightseeing ones if they still have them. This is what I love about this map is you're constantly driving down and you're passing all these different AI vehicles all in nice livery as well. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to see these E400 MMCs enter service. Come on, camera, there we go. Just wanted to show off the seats. Oh, it does look very, very nice as the interior of the sweet paint as well. Loving the different use of the um, Lovian maquette. But it's going to be exciting to see these B5TLs enter service. Hopefully in due course, we may see an update for um, some of the OMSI 2 packs. Potentially um, the Studio Polygon pack. Um, the Polygon E400 MMC with obviously um, a B5TL sort of sound mod to it. Although I don't understand, I don't know if there's any other bodywork changes. There might be some subtle bodywork changes um, due to the different chassis. Um, but we'll just have to see. 
But it's going to be a very exciting one, um, and it's another reason, um, to answer the many reasons, that I need to pop up to Edinburgh at some point. Because as of yet, I haven't managed that. Been up to Glasgow, and um, when they had all the Tridents and the B10 BLEs and the Marshall Body Dennis Darts in service were first group that are pretty much all now gone. Um, although Glasgow have just recently repainted one of their ALX400 Tridents, one of the handful left, and I've got to say, the um, repaint really suits the bolts. It really suits it down to the ground. Um, for those of you who do repaint, um, if you haven't already, do go and check it out. Um, I won't mind having a little drive of a repaint of that vehicle in Omni 2 at some point. No hints, no hints um, at all necessary there. But all I'm saying is, is it looks absolutely lovely. I don't know the fleet number, I know it's one of the triple threes, um, but it joins 33120, um, the president, the last president bodied Trident that was repainted into the new livery last year. Another near plan, goodness me. And that's something that we need for the sort of UK side is alongside all of our sort of proper vehicles, we've got Rumors, we've got Alexas, we need some very, very basic freeware AI vehicles as well to sort of place onto maps. Because I feel by doing that we will actually have more opportunity um, to sort of build um, build bigger maps like this, add more bus routes in without like the sort of the game pegging out. And hopefully that way people will be able to enjoy bigger maps more. I'm going to assume we're in this lane as we are going to South Valley. Brilliant, we are in this lane, that's good. Otherwise I'd be probably having to slam all on. Coming off the, I believe it was still the M1. Off the M1. And we're going on to the M2. Our Fed is going on to the M2. Although I don't think we're on this for long as we are going to South Valley and that looks like the next pull-off. You see, this is what I like about this map, is it has... The routes are tiny. The routes, let's say, are like 25 minutes, 30 minutes usually in length. They're not really that big. However... The, it's the sheer variety of the roads you travel on, especially the motorway routes. This is why I, I really, I always end up driving the airport services, because they all go on the motorways. And I feel like this is something that Great Rundorf too, especially at left path conversion, really has going for it, is the sort of motorways. And I think this network of M1, M2, and all of this, especially with all the signage as well, the perfect sort of like spleens and things that are put together. There's no stupidly tight turns. It is really, really good. And it, it's something that, if you haven't already got Great Grundorf 2, it is a free-to-download map. Um, it's something that I just recommend getting it for. As yes, the other sort of city routes are nice and things. And yes, there's the bus museum routes and what have. But for me, it's these airport services and the um, other ports. I think the very port terminal um, services as well um, that are quite nice. So I do need to go on a new route master in real life again. I think on my next trip down to London, um, I'm hoping to do another one at some point very soon. Um, I will probably try and actually take a ride on one of these. Um, one thing I was sort of shocked by was the amount of vandalism on some of the vehicles. Um, we were stood on um, London Bridge um, near Westminster and the 159 went past and I've never seen so many windows on a bus. And not the upper deck, the lower deck. I've never seen so many windows on the lower deck of a new route master etched up, sort of like etched into where people scratch them and sort of etched the name or something like that. And it was all on the lower deck and I found it really strange. Um, obviously because it's like the lower deck of the bus, it's usually um, the most civil part, uh, let's be honest. Um, and secondly because they'd managed to etch all of these different windows and not sort of like nobody would stopped them. That I did also find quite weird. That's a train I can hear. Another one. So that's something I don't get about 
OMSI 2 now is the train setup problem. For some reason, and it, it's been like this for me for a couple of years now actually, um, where the AI trains seem to group together. What I find weird is the trains seem to group together, so when they're in AI, there seems to be sort of two carriages within one another, then a gap, then two carriages again within one another. And I just don't get why that's happened, and it, it's happened sort of for years now. I think it was, first time I noticed it was in Baldenham, um, that's had some recent um, setbacks recently as the left path one. We're not going to discuss them, but um, if you know, you know with that one. If you've been watching these social media pages, you will be up to date with what's happened with that. But no, I think it was when I downloaded Borden and V4 um, for the first time, it just seemed to mess things up. Although I'll say that, this is a different setup, isn't it? So, I don't know why that's happened. If anybody else has that issue as well, let me know. South Valley Lake Park, South District Highway Interchange. If anybody else has an issue, let me know or if it's just a me thing um, and I need to change some settings in some shape or form. But to say this map is free is pretty amazing, that must be said. Must be said with, with the fact that it is a free to download map. It is absolutely huge. I would probably say there's about 35, potentially up to 40 bus services, depending on the times of day that you drive. Because some services only run Sunday, some run evening, some run during festivals. There's really a lot going on. And it must be said that this sort of services, as I discussed earlier in the main centre, that are very much based off Grundorf, like they're the core services. So like the 76, for example, is on here. So they're not the most exciting ones, but routes like the one that we are driving in, in this video, the A3, do have a bit of variety and are quite nice. There goes another train, as you can see on the top, for some reason there's gaps in the carriages. And I don't quite get it. And it, it just makes it look really weird, it just makes it look like each train, each mini train's following following the other one. There's about to be a massive crash. We don't want that really, but... Yeah, we'll go this way. So what will be interesting is when Lovian um, put the um, new E400 MMC B5 TLs into service, is it'll be interesting to see how they compare against both the ADL E400 MMC, so the ADL chassis, and the street deck bodywork for the B5 TL. It will be interesting to see if that combo does actually work quite well, because obviously they've got the B8Ls um, at Lovian and the XLBs, um, and they've sort of had, they've had varied successes, and um, there's been a few setbacks with them, um, but they have done relatively well. Well, and, and overall they have done pretty well, it must be said. Um, but these B5 TLs, it's going to be very interesting to see how these actually cope in comparison.
There we go, that's us. Just going to pull it on in and I feel like we might be slightly early. No, we're actually weirdly on time. <laughs> to say I absolutely floored this bus up that motor, I am very impressed. As I thought we were in a couple of minutes ahead of schedule, but we're not. I think I found my new favourite route on the map. With a tight timetable and an excuse to floor it. So my new route is this. So that is one thing I'm actually switching on the lights at the front. One thing I, I do not like about this vehicle. And it's pretty much the only thing is that when you click the light button, all of the lights go on. Um, it would be nice if there was sort of, to say it is a payware vehicle, it would be nice if there were separate toggle keys for certain parts of the lights. That would be nice. Yep, we're going straight on here. I was not aware any vehicles actually went through mid levels plaza. I genuinely thought they terminated there. But no, um, I wasn't that that was a new one for me with that. So speaking of new ones and new things, um, Yorkshire is now on Steam. Um, I think it's going to be released, or oh, they're looking into releasing it this summer if all goes to plan. Um, but it is now on the Steam store, so you can add it to your wish list as and when it's released. That, I must say, is pretty exciting. So it is one I am looking forward to, um, primarily I'm looking forward to it due to the um, sort of collaboration with First South Yorkshire, obviously quite local to me, I've done a lot of um, real life videos um, around them, I'm currently working on the second volume um, for the Sheffield Brands, so I'm currently working on that at the moment, um, so I do a lot of work around First South Yorkshire and obviously in the past sort of six, not even six months to be fair, uh, the past six, six months or so we'll say, um, there has been a big, big positive change within the business. New brands coming in, new liveries, um, sort of new route revisions that help services operate better. And there's a newfound care in the company. There's a, there's a new sense of pride that has been really, really nice to see. So to see to see that they are working with a OMSI 2 developer and obviously they've now embraced their livery a little bit and they're going to be having a bus service based around that. I'm very interested to see how much of an influence the sort of First South Yorkshire collaboration is going to have on the map project, as I think it will be pretty cool. Also something else to know, um, that they basically like got me convinced to get the map with, um, is the Travel South Yorkshire style bus stop flags um, that they have got around the map um, in the next edition. That's safe to say do look pretty cool. So yes, that was Route A3 running from the airport terminal to South Valley Hospital. I'm just going to move this bus round into the sunlight. I hope it's the sunlight. The sunlight's over there, isn't it? Oh, I have no idea where it is. But hey ho, that doesn't look too bad. So yes, that was Route A3 um, with the L Adam London New Route Master, the NRM, that is part of the Adam London pack. We also used the lovely Lovian City repaint, um, the fictional one by ScotRail605, and the blinds mod for this vehicle. So you can use it on Great Rundorf 2 with all the working destinations, all of which will be linked in the description below so you can recreate this run um, for yourself as and when you wish. So it has been a nice run. I hope you've enjoyed the visit back to Great Rundorf 2, and I hope you've enjoyed the motorway route. It is always nice to drive something a little bit different, um, and these motorway services are definitely my favourite on Great Rundorf um, to Left Path, it must be said. So if you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to hit the like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you are new to the channel, hello and welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, and I do hope you have, and you want to see more like this, both from the virtual simulation, uh, sort of virtual transport simulation world, as well as the real life bus industry, do be sure to subscribe and join the And More Central community. 
Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.